What does it mean to be confident? How can you be more confident? Whether it's at work, whether it's in social situations, whether it's in front of the camera. So confidence is something that all of us, I think, want more of. And if anything, it makes us able to portray the most attractive versions of ourselves. Now I'm gonna break it down for you. There's three layers to confidence. Confidence based on appearance, confidence based on competence, and confidence based on acceptance. I've never seen it broken down like this, but this is how I see it. And I see it also kind of being connected to the age as well, like in our teens and 20s, we're obsessed with appearance. Then we realize that it's more about the value and that we provide to the world and our real abilities. So our confidence is more based on competence. And then, you know, as we get wiser, as we embark on more of an introspective spiritual journey, let's say, we realize that true self-confidence comes from radical acceptance and honesty of oneself. So let's go through this because clearly I'm not trying to say one is necessarily better than the other. I think it's just a natural progression of a person's confidence journey, if you like, okay? So the first thing is this, when we first begin, right, as young guys, maybe even for women, but especially for young guys, it's all about how can we look good, okay? We see in school the good-looking guys on TV, Hollywood, the good-looking guys get the girls and we're like, how can we make our face look better? How can we, like, look more handsome? How can we dress better? How can we da 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 you know, wear, like, cooler clothes? This occupies the mind of young men across the globe and it's natural right and does it matter yes it does appearance matters clearly because in evolution we are designed to pay attention to appearance and physical cues to make decisions about the best people to mate with the peacock with the big feathers or the lion with the big whatever you know so appearance matters the simplest way to build confidence based on appearance is to build the sickest body that you can build, to build a lean and aesthetic body, drop to a low body fat, build muscle in the right places, be proud of the body that you've built. And if you know that I have a fitness channel, you know, I break it down in excruciating detail how to do that. I'm not going to go into it here. But that confidence is the best thing you can do in the realm of appearance because it's actually attained through effort and sacrifice and discipline rather than just buying some random designer clothes like Gucci, whatever, Chanel, and then just putting it all over your body and trying to be like cool or confident with that. Because once that's been stripped away, once we take your Gucci bag away, your cool Nike whatever away, you're just left there like feeling not confident because that's a crutch. Whereas if you've actually built your body, we can drop you on a desert island. We could even strip you and take all your clothes and belongings away. You know that you have mastery over your own body weight you know that you are strong enough to carry yourself to pull yourself up a tree you know it's just it's just more fundamental right and just a lot of people seem to think that they're ugly that they're fat blah, blah. and as someone who's gone through this journey it's like if you know what you're doing if you drop to a low body fat percentage and you build muscle in the right places i promise you you're not ugly you will be amazed at the transformation that you can get I will do a separate video, I think, on fashion on the main channel, even though I'm not a fashion expert by any means. Like, it's just, you know, I just, a lot of requests for it. So obviously the way you dress matters as well, understanding certain colors, not trying to do too flashy stuff, but just understanding the basics of how to dress well. And also your posture, your body language, your eye contact, this matters a lot more than, than fashion, in my opinion, for your general confidence. But those are the kinds of factors, right? You have the body, you have the, the clothes, and you have your body language and your posture. Work on these things to build confidence based on appearance. The problem with this level of confidence is that, let's say you're the best looking guy in your high school, right? All the girls like you, like, oh yeah, yeah. Then we drop you in Hollywood, or we drop DiCaprio and Brad Pitt next to you. Suddenly, you're not confident anymore, are you? Because it's relative. You're, your confidence is based on something that is fragile, that when you compare it, there's always someone better. And when, you, when we put you next to that person, your confidence withers away. Then there's a deeper layer of confidence, which is layer two, which is the one based on competence. What you actually are able to do in terms of the value that you provide to the world. Let's say, despite the fact that you're not the best looking guy, you can take care of your family. 
and that you have a black belt in jiu-jitsu that you can take care of the people around you if anyone mess with you you could screw them up you could beat them up right you wouldn't do that if you're a black belt right but you know you could right and you carry yourself in a certain way in social situations in tense pressure situations because you have this kind of core of self-reliance that you can defend yourself and even some people around you that's competence all right let's take a much sillier example let's say you're just like a freaking amazing League of Legends player, Dota player, your mid lane solo game is so sick, you just destroy everyone. That guy, when he's playing that game, because he's more competent than everyone, he's chatting in the chat all the time, telling people like, do this, do that. And the way he speaks, right, even in the text, is so confident because he's so sure of himself in that realm of endeavor. In, so he's competent in that field, which gives him confidence take you in front of your niece and nephews, right? Suddenly, the way you speak, your body language, your eye contact, your gestures, the way you carry yourself, everything just screams conviction, certainty, and you're so much more endearing and charismatic and persuasive because of that. Because with your niece and nephews, you know you can provide value. You know you're more competent than them and there's more knowledge and experience. So you express in this way, right? So you are super confident based on your competence. But again, we run into the same problem because this is based on the relative situation, right? You're better than the other gamers. You're more experienced than your niece and nephews. You're a better fighter than the other guy. And what happens when we put you again in a different situation? Your confidence starts to, to, to shake, right? The gamer that's super confident suddenly in another social situation with a girl, he, he, he stumbles upon his words, right? The fighter who's so big, you know, against another black belt who's way more trained, he's not so confident now. Do you see, again, we run into this kind of block where you are comparing yourself to the other person and there's always a better version of you. There's someone better in that craft than you. And if you if your confidence is based on that, then this constant chase for the next version and then realizing you're never going to be enough is going to eat away at your sense of confidence. Now, I've made it seem like layer one and layer two are not very important or something like that. I hope I'm not coming across that way because they're very important. If you still want to work on your looks. You still want to work on your competence. And this is going to be, you know, the foundation of everyday life confidence, right? But there is a layer deeper, which is this is true confidence. This confidence is the kind of confidence that doesn't just shake and wither away depending on the situation or the person that you're with. It's the kind of confidence that you see like some kind of very wise, experienced older men or women tend to have where they can be thrown in a completely unfamiliar situation, but they'll still have this kind of grounded essence, right? You know, they could be, you could throw them in a room of financial experts and they might know nothing about finance, but just the way they speak, the way they sit, the way they express themselves when it's their time to speak is just, it's just grounded. It's just not, it's not trying to seek other people's validation or look good in front of others. It's just, it's just grounded in how they're feeling and they express from, from that space. This is true confidence all right i don't know uh, who who would be a good example maybe someone like robert de niro or al pacino they kind of seem to have this like they're not trying to hustle anybody or be louder than the next guy or tell the cooler story or impress the next girl like it's just they've been through the pinnacle of the appearance-based confidence and the competence-based confidence and probably they realize through experience that all of that is just show it's games and shows and that really being okay with oneself, being accepting of oneself, forgiving oneself, is where true confidence or true um, growth lies. And I don't mean this in just some wishy-washy way. It's really confronting your own demons, like your own negative sides, your own, like your own, uh, it's like really dealing with your own trauma, the things that have made you the way that you are, like made you a little bit anxious in certain situations. Maybe you cannot project your voice properly because 
the first time you expressed yourself loudly, you were shut down, right? You were crying and then your mother frowned at you or your father out shouted you. And this is instilled in the body as a physical symptom, as a as trauma that we carry. This is you know, talked about in psychoanalysis, right? And, you know, letting go of that block in your throat is not just doing vocal exercises. It's actually to maybe go back to that original installation of the trauma, that moment, to re-narrate that experience and be like, you know, in that moment, I forgive myself. I was helpless. I was weak. I felt weak and powerless. I felt unloved and I felt... Uh, and, and just going through this kind of therapy and this self-introspection, which then allows you to accept yourself. First of all, you have to be vulnerable. This is a key word, vulnerable. Right? You have to be vulnerable enough to go there. And then you accept yourself and forgive yourself for the faults that you have because, you know, they all came from past experiences of, you know, trauma and things like that. And once you accept that and let that go, then you are less judging of yourself about the fact that you cannot project your voice properly. Then either, you know, one or two things happen. The way you express yourself just sounds natural to how you feel, so you sound more confident. Or you actually let go of that block and you can suddenly start to project really well, right? I very much simplified the idea of this kind of deep work and things, but the key ideas are there. It's, it's really about being vulnerable. This is a key word because vulnerability is what allows you to become authentic. Authentic is being vulnerable, is being radically honest about how you feel and what you've been through. And all of this leads to self-acceptance. I accept myself with all my faults and I am enough as I am and I don't need constantly to be compared, to be better, to be better dressed, to be better looking, to be stronger, to be a better fighter, to make more money, to be more competent. And once you let that go, which is just the ego's chase to be more and better, you let that go and you say, hey, I am enough as I am. Then you've accepted yourself, you can suddenly accept other people, you can suddenly extend that kind of awareness towards other people. And this is the space where if you're in here, if you're in this space, you're present, you're not trying to get people's validation. Then the way you speak, the way you sit, the way you express the words you choose, everything will flow naturally from that authentic state. And your words will naturally carry weight and substance and you will be, you will have that grounded energy. I hope you know what I'm talking about. Some people have this, you know. It might just be the old guy on the street or whatever. Just, it's just, just, it's like a groundedness. And it's a groundedness that comes from not seeking other people's approval, which comes from radical self-acceptance. All right, may have sounded like waffle and circular thoughts and stuff, but this is really where it's at. I could break each one down, you know, how to get more, like how to get a sexier body, how to dress better. And I'm going to do all of that probably on my main channel this side. And then uh, you want to do, you know, martial arts. You want to do, uh, you want to learn how to make money a little bit and stuff. Or maybe a lot to build competence and build value. You know, you do want to do all of this. But there is this ultra deeper layer, which is, which is the only confidence that's not uh, relative. Right? So I hope that helped. Try to work on all three layers of confidence. Ask yourself, where am I right now? What am I putting all my focus to? And where can I put my focus also? That's it, guys. See you in the next video.